Hello everyone and a very warm welcome. In this particular tutorial, we will go ahead and use the attachment control. Yes, you heard it right. The attachment control form a SharePoint list, but we will not use the data source as SharePoint. We will directly send the data over the email or post process it. So that being said, without wasting any further time, let's get into the demo. I'm going to create a blank app. So I'll say attachment demo. Perfect. So first and foremost, what I want to show you is if I try to add a control and if I type in attachment, there is no control as of such. So how do we go ahead and get the attachment control? To get the attachment control, I need to go and get it from a SharePoint list. Now you'll say, Clavin, you're contradicting yourself by doing that because you just told us that, you know, you will not use the list as a data source. Yes, my friends, that's correct. I'm not going to go ahead and use the list as a data source. What I'm going to do, I have a dummy list out here. I'll just add that list as a data source as of now, and then I will delete it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to type in SharePoint out here. I'll create the connection. I'll go ahead and put Power Apps and click on Connect. I'll just select the dummy list. It's known as Demo List, and I'll hit Connect. At this point, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and insert a form. So I'll insert an edit form and I'll connect it to this data source. So this actually goes ahead and adds the control. I'll go ahead and delete the other columns or the other fields. And what I'm going to do, I'm only interested in this particular attachment field. First thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to unlock this field. I'll select the attach file, I'll cut it and then I'll delete this particular form. I'll paste it outside the field. So this is our attachment control. I'm going to go ahead and delete the data source. So the data source is gone. That's perfect. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and delete everything that tells parent. Okay. So I'll just show you what are we going to delete. So here, if you see, it has got it on the items property, the tool tipped, and even the border color, and then the display mode, right? So we need to remove from one, two, three, four. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just delete it like this. So you can just go through the errors. As you see, it's in the item property. It's in the display and it should be in the display mode as well. So perfect. So the error is gone. The error is gone. The attachment control looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first go ahead and rename my attachment control to a meaningful name so that we don't get confused later. So I'll say attachment underscore control, right? So this looks good. So attachment underscore control is a meaningful name. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add a gallery. So I'll move the gallery to my right and instead of passing the items, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass the attachment control dot attachments, right? So it's going to take the attachments. Now at this point, instead of the sample image, I'll say this item dot value, right? So this would be good enough. And the next thing I'm going to set, I have got two fields out here. So image is fine. I'll use the title field and I'll rename it here. I'll say LBL attachment name, right? So this item dot name, we will leave the last one for later. Now, next, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to go ahead and wire up a formula. So to wire up a formula, the most easiest option would be for us to understand is to add a button. So the button not inside the gallery. OK, we'll add a button outside somewhere on the screen. So button. Button is here. To this button, I'm going to set up a formula. 
So firstly, I need to go ahead and collect all the items from the attachment control, right? Or from the gallery. So before I go ahead and, you know, so firstly, I need to collect all the items from the gallery. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say collect and I'm going to say the collection name would be file collection. And I'll say gallery two dot all items, right? This looks good to me. But before I collect, what I'll do is that I'll make sure every time I hit this button, I first clear the collection. So I'll say clear file collection and then go ahead and do the collection. So clear the collection, collect all the items from the gallery. Now I want to collect the items from the gallery, but I want to do it in a meaningful way. So what I'm going to do out here, I'm going to say loop through all the items. So I'm going to say for all, what do I want to loop? I want to loop the file collection, right? So file collection, I want to loop through the file collection. And when I loop it, I'm going to collect what I'm going to collect. I need to collect the file content. So I'll create a new gallery named as file content, which will go ahead and store firstly my file. The file would be image one or image three, right? In this case, so image three dot image. But what I'm going to do, I want this in a base 64 bit format. So I'll say JSON or in a binary format. So I'll say JSON image three image and I'll say JSON format dot include as binary data. OK, this is the important piece in the puzzle. So I need to close this bracket so that it looks good. So this is good. And next, what I need, next what I need is uh, I have the file, that's great. I need the file name. So I'll create another property out here known as file name. And to this file name, I'm going to go ahead and set LBL attachment. It, it was LBL, not LABL or something like that, dot text. Right, so this looks good. At this point, what I can do is I can close my for all loop out here. And what else I need to do? So no, I close the file content first and then I close the for all loop, right? So this is how our formula would look like. Now, this is great. I can loop through the files and get the file contents. Finally, what I need to do, I need to set OK, I need to set the file data. I need to set a variable known as file data to the file content, right? So we can go ahead and pass it along. So this is good. I think we can go ahead and try our formula. Let me go ahead and save my work so that, you know, if something happens, I don't mess up my work. So that's good. So let me play the app and let me go ahead and attach few images. So I have added two images out here. And let's go ahead and try to press on this button. Once I press on this button, what really happens behind the scene is we should have a variable with the inputs that we want. So what I can do is I can add a text input and I can set it to the variable that we just created. That is the file data. If you look out here, my friends, we have the file data in this particular variable. In fact, it also has the image name three. Isn't that awesome, right? So we have the file as an array and we have got the images as well. Let me try to maybe just briefly copy this and let me actually put it into a notepad so that we have a better look and feel. So this is how it looks. Perfect, right? So if I scroll up, this is the file. 
And let me search if I have two file names. So my first file name was extract. So if you see the file name extract is out here. So this is our first, you know, the first base 64. And then the second base 64 starts from here. So we have two files in an array. In the next tutorial, we'll go ahead and pass these files to Power Automate and post process it such that further actions so that we can use it in further actions, maybe send it over an email or merge multiple files into PDF. I hope this quick tutorial was informative. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.